Hello everybody, welcome back to the game room. Today I'm going to add three new systems to this setup. It's not going to be easy because there's a lot of space already taken by the existing systems. So I'm going to have to cram these in here and I'm just going to have you watch me do this process of installing these three systems. It's going to be very nerdy, so let's get nerdy. So here's the first game system I'm hooking up today, and it's the Evercade Versus. I cannot wait to play this. Out of all the ones today, I think this will be the easiest, and I plan on putting it in this spot right here. So let's unbox this and hook it up. In case you're wondering what an Evercade Versus is, <laughs> It is a new cartridge-based system. New as in it's still in production. It's actually maybe a year old, maybe. They make cartridges for it. And the cartridges are normally compilations of old arcade games. There's also games from some of the older systems like Genesis and stuff like that. There's where the cartridges go. It actually holds two cartridges at once. This comes with two cartridges. One has eight games and one has 10 games. There's Data East and then a Technos collection. And here's how you stick the cartridges in. There we go, look at that. There's the back of it. If you want to plug this into the wall, you have to get an adapter separately. I'm just gonna make a little bit of room here. The USB cord that came with it will need to be plugged into this adapter. It's not very long, so I may need to uh, use an electrical extension cord. It could be a very small one like this, or it could be a, a long one like this. I'm also going to need an HDMI cord, so I have this very long one. I have four storage bins in another room full of just cords, and those storage bins are just something that I need in order to have a setup like this because I need to extend things, I need to power things and backups in case one of the cords breaks or something like that. So I'm gonna plug this into the plug here. Station 91 is the switch, and station 92 over here is the PS3. I need the Versus to be station 92, so I'm going to be moving this sticker over to the middle. The good news is that the cord reaches up to the power panel up here, so I'm going to need to plug this into switch number 92. Currently, the PS3 is plugged in there, so I'm going to move that to 93. I think 93 is not being used, but I'm going to turn it on and off and see if anything comes on. I got the HDMI cord pulled all the way to the TV, and now I'm going to plug it into this switch box right here. This can hold five HDMI inputs. This one here can hold 16, but they're already all full. Ignore all the numbering and lettering here. This is how I used to have it plugged in, and I'm going to relabel it in the future. So I'm just gonna snake it in from the back here, and I'll plug it into this right here. 
Whenever I want to play to Evercade, I'll have to switch to HDMI 2 on the TV. If you're interested in this big one here, I did make a video about it, and I'll put a link in the description. I'm going to turn it on now and see if it works. So we got switch 92 up here, and we got a power button right here, and let's see if the switch box auto detects it. If not, I'll have to switch it. Okay, so the system is not working yet. I have to troubleshoot. I just read the manual and apparently you have to hold the power button down for it to come on. So let me see if that works. There's some light on here, so it looks like it's coming on now. What is it doing? Okay, looks like we got a setup. This has to be the best music I've ever heard on a language selection screen before. This is not going to be a review of the Evercade, but I do want to show you the game selection screen, which is pretty cool. So I think it looks very nice sitting here in between the Switch and the PS3. So I'm just going to tie up the power cord a little bit here. I could use a twister seal, but there's already Velcro ties back there, so I'm just going to use those. It's looking good there. We're ready to move on to the next system. The next system is the BuzzTime Home Trivia System. Some people might say this is not a game system at all, but it, however, it does hook up to the TV. It is a game and it has interchangeable cartridges that basically have more trivia questions on them. If you've ever played trivia inside a restaurant or bar, it may have been made by BuzzTime. They made this for home use and as far as I know, it did not catch on very much. I did buy three cartridges for it. We got TV, history, and sports. They're very weird looking. They have this notch right here. This is an open box, so I don't know if it'll come with everything it originally had. Alrighty. So it looks like it's never been used. Everything is taped down. Oh, look at all this. There we go, we just have composite and one channel for the audio. Wow, look at that. They really tied this thing down. This does look like it's been used because it looks like there's some fingerprints around here. Very lightweight, there's the cartridge slot. The back of it just has this one cable coming out of it. Now you may notice, where's the power connection? Well guess what? This is a battery only game system. As far as I know, this is the only battery based game system. There are some that use battery as a backup, but not for the only source of power. Luckily I have some on hand. Let's get these controllers out of here. So here's what the controllers look like. There's some mushiness to these buttons, but I do like how button three is raised up compared to the other ones. That way you don't have to look down to make your choice. These buttons are for answering multiple choice questions, one through five. The back has the battery compartment, and on the side it has an on-off switch. Now this is a big problem because if you forget to turn it off, then it's gonna drain the batteries. So that's another flaw in this system. Now look, look what it says right here. It says, to avoid potential damage to console, rechargeable batteries are not recommended. Well, screw you, I'm using rechargeables. I wanna put it right here in between the 2600 and the ColecoVision. However, I would like it to be raised up so that it's even with the systems around it. So what I'm going to do is replace this black tray and this black tray 
with a long shelf. You already saw a similar shelf for the Evercade, but I've recently made more of them and I'm painting them a different color than the blue on the other side. I haven't decided which of the two colors to use in the room, but this time I'm using a very, very light blue. It's almost like a gray. So here's one of the new ones. I'm not going to go into detail about how to make this because I already made a video like that and I'll put a link to it in the description. But basically these are the same that I made in that video, but it's a little bit smaller. Every time I go to make a new one, I try to modify it a little bit and I figured out that I can make it with a smaller piece of wood basically. But I'm going to install it down there and see how it looks. In order to help prop the controllers up, I'm going to install this wooden bar. So now all I have to do is plug this composite in somewhere. That's a big problem because I have nowhere to plug it into. I'm going to have to create more composite capability in this setup. Let me explain what I have currently going on. On top of the TV, I currently have a five-way switch box, which is totally dedicated to the systems that output composite. I have two other switch boxes hooked up into that one, which are four-way switches. And each of those has four systems currently plugged into it. So they're all 100% full. My modded 2600 has its own port on the five-way switch box. And I have one switch dedicated to playing the two VCR-based game systems. And I have a whole other switch for recording the gameplay for those two VCR based systems. So everything is 100% booked up. There's not a composite port available on any of this design. The way I play the two VCR systems is very complex, so much so that I have to hide this explanation within the setup itself. In addition to the buzz time, I have another composite based system that I'm going to hook up today. So I need a total of two new composite ports to plug into. What I'm going to do is remove the VCR recording capability from the setup because I'm never going to use that. That'll free up one space on the main switch box, which I'll use for the third system I hook up today. You'll see later why I choose to hook it up directly into the box. But I still need to free up another one. So what I'm going to do is replace one of the four-way switches with a five-way switch. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and replace both the four-way switches with five-way switches since I have two five-way switches on hand as you can see right here. So in the end, I'm going to end up opening up three different composite inputs. And by the end of the video, I'll be using two of them. The third one will be saved for future use. You can see how on this one there's labeling already on it. I'm just gonna pop those things off. I didn't do these, it was sold like this at GameStop or wherever.
Here it is, it's looking pretty good. I'm gonna reuse these stickers for now. And let's just put it right there. I'm gonna make buzz time number 47. I want to renumber some things. There's also things that don't have labeling that need it. And there's also labeling that needs to be replaced because I've peeled it off and reused it so many times. So that's going to be a whole other thing I do on another day. So let's turn this thing on and see if it works. Uh. Nothing. There's no light or anything. Wait, I think I hear something. Ooh, yeah. I don't know why I had to hit the power button so many times. Now you're gonna see some flickering that I don't see. It's just because of the way the camera works. Let me hit some buttons here and see if I can start playing. Can't get it to work yet. I forgot, I gotta turn on the controller. All right, everything trivia. This thing is supposed to have an internal save, but obviously there's no high scores saved in it yet. There's no up or down, it's just left or right. Okay, so this allows for up to eight people to play. You can buy additional controllers, but I only have two. Round one starts in 10 seconds. I'm ready. Okay. So what's the question? Oh, it's number five. I hit number five, hopefully it took it. I think it did because it shows the points that I rung in at. Yay. So it's about what I expected it to be, just a standard trivia system. The questions you saw there were actually built into the system. You can use cartridges to expand. But overall, I think I might play this with my wife a few times. But there's a lot better trivia options in this game room than this thing. So let's move on to the next system. The next system is the GoGo TV. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> This is basically a toy, but it is a game system. It has interchangeable cartridges. So, whoops. <laughs> Very weird looking cartridge. It was sold with this one and it has four games. This is a camera and what it does is it puts your image in the game, kind of like Xbox Connect. On the back, there's some AVN, but that doesn't help us in this setup we'll have to use the AV out, which is right here. We have one video and two sound channels. It also came with this AC adapter, which also declares it a toy. The bottom has some feet and it's weird. It looks like it might be missing some feet on the back, but I'm not so sure it ever had feet to begin with. This was a used unit. There's separate games that can be bought for this and they have a lot of plastic that goes along with it. It's a childish system, but it's a very interesting system and I can't wait to test it out. So where to put this? I'm thinking it needs to go right here because there's a camera on top and that needs to be lined up with you as you're playing the game. Um, if I put it any higher than the TV here, it may not be able to see me. Because this camera on top doesn't tilt or anything like that, I guess you could tilt the system itself. But there is a space right here and I think I'm going to have to put it there even though it's gonna look really dorky. But what can you do? It's the GoGo TV. It's gonna look dorky wherever you put it. The top of the TV here is slippery. You can see these switch boxes have this material underneath them to keep them from slipping off the back of the TV. It's like an anti-slip material. And I have another square right here and I'm just going to put this in here. It's gonna be hard to fit. There we go. 
I don't know if it's going to be easy to change cartridges, but I don't expect to be buying too many games for this. There's only one available outlet to plug this into, and I can plug it in like that, but it'll be sticking out the top like that. So I'm going to get a little tiny extension cord and plug it into that so that this block doesn't have to go right up against the rack mount. Here's the one I'll use. Like that. There we go. I'm just going to put up some temporary labeling here. I'm not sure if I want to stick this on the front of the TV. I, th I think I might just do this for now. Everything so far has gone very well. Let's see if this system works. Where's the on switch? Go. Oh, I might want to turn the power on. <laughs> it works. I can see the other side of my game room on the screen right there. I, I'm not sure if you can see it, the Atari logo right there. Once again, this is going to look really flickery to you. There I am. So the way this system works is things happen on the screen and then I use my hands to do things. One of the complaints about this device is that it doesn't detect very well. You have to have the lighting set up really good. All right, so I get to choose a game here. I guess I'm juggling because it didn't really let me select a game. All right, here we go. It's actually working. I can use my head too. This, this is pretty cool. I'm a little bit too close to the screen, so I think I have an advantage. And my head's big. Yeah, it says Sega right there. Backward. This music rocks. Oh wow, it's a lot faster now. I think I missed one. By hitting the set button that's on top, I can select one of the four games. Let's try Break a Brick. Um. Okay, so it's like breakout with your hands. I'm just so happy it actually works. Let me know if you'd like to see a full review of this system. So that's it for today. If you'd like to see a similar video, I did one where I created some shelves for this room. If you'd like to watch that, just click the link right there. May your games make you happy and smart, and may people respect you for playing them. So long, everybody. Well, Lottie frickin' God!